Okay, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about automotive clay. When to do it, why you need to do it, um, and the different options of what you have uh, available to you. So I have a couple tips and tricks on how to get the job done faster. Clay can, claying can be a little bit of a pain. You know, you have to go over everything uh, diligently and get every little nook and cranny. Um, and I have some tips and tricks on how to make that job go faster. Um, so first and foremost, guys, I am gonna show you uh, why you need to clay and how to know when you need to clay. So let me take you off the, off the tripod here. Okay guys, so I'm gonna try and get this to focus for you. This is gonna be a little bit difficult, um, but this is something that every single vehicle has in it. And it's just that not every, you don't see it in every vehicle, but can you see all these, there we go, it's starting to focus. There, all those little speckles. They're kind of a brown sort of golden speckle. That is industrial fallout, guys. That is essentially kind of little rust particles sitting on the clear coat that need to be removed or it can cause damage down the road. Now, what is industrial fallout? Industrial fallout is, essentially you can think about it as little particulates in the air that land on your vehicle. They sit on the vehicle, the, the vehicle gets moisture on it from sprinklers, from just condensation in the air overnight, all that kind of stuff. It adheres into the clear coat and then that eventually can cause problems. So you wanna keep that stuff out. Obviously it looks bad. Um, and again, guys, this here is a pretty extreme case. This vehicle I bought used um, and it was parked near the airport which in San Diego, which is actually right next to the bay as well, which is also near where they work on some of the Navy ships. So with that said, guys, we have uh, airline fuel exhaust landing on it. We have constant um, salt air sitting on it. And we have industrial uh, debris, basically, you know, from them working on the ships. Uh, welding, cutting of metal, all that kind of stuff goes in the air, little particulates land on it, and we get this issue. So again, this is an extreme case. It is littered with these little specks throughout the whole vehicle, but every vehicle has it, guys. And white is great because you can see it, but if you have a black car, it's important to clay even if you don't see it because obviously on a black car, you're not gonna see that unless it's extreme. So how do you know when to clay? Basically, you can just run your hand across the paint. If it doesn't feel perfectly smooth like a piece of glass, you have some contamination in your, in your paint. Um, the industry recommendation is every, typically about every six months. However, I like to advise my, my, my customers, my friends, that you can push it further than that because you're kind of, when you're doing a clay treatment, you kind of think of it as like a 20, 30,000 grit sandpaper. When you're using clay, it does slightly cut into the clear coat, microscopic levels, but over time, if you're doing it too much, you are wearing down your clear coat and there's no need to get that aggressive into it. Now, they do make different grades of clay. They have fine grade, medium grade, et cetera, um, for your situation. Most of the time, guys, 99% of the time, you're only gonna need a fine grade. So keep that in mind. You're not gonna be cutting into the clear coat very much. It's gonna be totally fine. Um, as long as you're using enough lubrication, it's not gonna mar the paint. Just do a quick wax afterwards and you're good to go. You don't have to polish it if you don't want to. Obviously, I always do. Anytime I clay a vehicle, I'm doing a polish, then sealing it again. So, um, but if you're happy with the way the car looks, um, you know, for the, for the usual everyday person, everyday driver, that's gonna to be totally fine. Now, um, you do want to make sure that you're protecting it afterwards though, because clay can remove wax and all that kind of good stuff. So um, it doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily remove um, uh, ceramic coatings, but if you're using a heavy grade uh, clay and then polishing like with a, or a compounding afterwards, that can remove your clear coat. So just keep that stuff in mind. So here guys, I'm gonna go ahead and try and lower this down. Okay, we'll zoom you in. And here we go. So I'm gonna leave, I have my microphone here on my shirt. I'm just gonna let you hear this. It sounds terribly, terribly rough. Terribly rough. Uh, it also feels like sandpaper because all those particulates are sitting in that clear coat, creating little ridges in the, in the clear coat. You can feel it. Basically what we're gonna do now is use clay to remove all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna jump into the different types of clay that you can get nowadays. Traditionally it was just a little clay bar that felt like clay, but there's synthetic clays now that make your life a little bit easier. So let's jump into those. Number one is your traditional clay. So this is it here. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up so you guys can see it a little bit better. 
Um, the benefits of this is typically, typically these are, especially if you get the fine grade, uh, these are going to be the least aggressive. Jeez. Uh, they're going to mar the paint the least amount. And the downfall from them is obviously this packaging is a nightmare. <laughs> it's just all stuck together. And oh my goodness. And the real downfall to this stuff is, is while you're working with it, rubbing the car, if it slips out of your hand and falls on the ground, it's done. It is done. It's very sticky, like, look at it. Sticks to my hand, okay? So that's why you need a lot of lubrication while you're working with it, otherwise you're gonna leave some re uh, residue from the clay on the, on the car, which is really easy to remove, but just keep it nice and lubricated. Um, but because it's so sticky, if you drop it on the ground, it's gonna pick up stuff. Right, everything's gonna get lodged into this. Potentially a little pebble, uh, some other sort of hard material. So say you do that, you accidentally drop it, something gets wedged in there, you pick it up and start going again, now you're rubbing something hard into that clear coat. Scratching, 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 scratching. So guys, please, if you're using traditional clay and you drop it, throw it away. Okay, so this is a smaller bar. I typically break mine into either two or three pieces. You don't need a lot of clay, so we'll just rip that one into two. And basically all I do is, here's my little ball. I'll just get it into a nice little ball, squish it down. And there you go. So now I can use it. It's a nice thin piece, not too big. And you work your whole area over just like that, using this to pull out the contamination. Again, guys, uh, so important, if you drop it, it's done, throw it away. Now, outside of the traditional clay, we do have synthetic clays now, and they come in a bunch of different variations, and I have a few of them here. So, from Chemical Guys, I have their little clay block. Um, so, I'll open this up for you. And here it is. Jeez, why is that so wet? I guess the clay lubed, clay lube uh, leaked inside of it, so it's wet, but. Um, Basically, it's a little sponge, as you can see, and one side has a synthetic coating on it, and that acts as your clay. Does a fantastic job. Um, the reason I don't use, just in my personal preference, I don't use a clay block. Why? Because this edge and on this soft piece, um, now if you keep it super lubed, it's, it's super lubricated, it's totally fine, but I have had it where the edge will catch and then you get a black streak across the paint. You have to use some goof off to remove it or some polish to remove it. I don't like that, it creates more work for myself. So I don't personally like the clay block that much, but I would still prefer this over the traditional clay because if you drop this, it's synthetic. You can take it over to your rinse bucket, take it over to a hose, wash it off and you're good to go. It'll remove all the particulates from it and you'll be good to go. Next one up guys is a wash uh, clay mitt right here, and I actually love these. So you can use it one side for washing, the other side for claying. Um, this one is from Nano Skin. I love that, I've, I've used this, this clay mitt a ton, I love it. If you just, I, I typically don't put my hand in it, I just hold it and, and go. Uh, the reason I love this thing so much is look at the surface area. So we take that in comparison to the clay mitt, and that just means that you are able to get your claying on your vehicle done super, super fast because you're covering so much more surface area with each, with each, with each pass. Um, it's still very, very um, pliable, so you can get into the tight spots. Fantastic piece of equipment, guys. I, I really love these. Now, these are usually around 35, 45 bucks, but they typically last longer than clay because you can drop them and rinse them off again. Now, the last one I have here is a clay pad. This is from Max Shine. This is the one I prefer to use when I'm using these clay pads. Um, I, I prefer these because the other ones from bigger brands are typically around that $40 range. The one from Max Shine is like 15 bucks or something, and it's fantastic. Doesn't mar the paint, or it will because it's a little bit more aggressive than others. Um, but if you're doing, if you're claying and then polishing after, zero concern there. You're, you're coming out perfect. Um, and the cool thing about these, again, you're getting a bigger surface area than the clay block. It's flexible enough that you can get it into the tight spots. Not quite as much surface area as the clay mitt, but still really good. And it does have Velcro backing, so you can actually apply this to a polisher and go that way. Now, I don't recommend that in most circumstances. That's too aggressive. You don't need to go that route. 
Full transparency though, I have done it. I only do it on cars that are completely trashed. For example, that van. <laughs> it is completely trashed. No matter what I do to that, it's not gonna make it any worse. And plus I'm gonna be polishing it out afterwards. So um, I have done that, it just makes the job faster. But um, under normal circumstances, I typically just hold this and go to town. This and this are my two preferred choices. There is one other option. You can actually get a clay towel and it's basically just a microfiber towel, like 16 by 16 inch microfiber towel. And one side of it is coated with that synthetic material. Um, you can fold it up and all that kind of stuff. I don't like those. They're a little too floppy for me. When I try and fold it up, then one side's thicker than the other. I don't like those personally. I, I never use those. So I stick to my, my clay options of choice, clay mitt, clay pad. So let's go ahead and go back over to the van. I'm gonna do a waterless wash real quick, just inside, I'm inside. So for the purposes of this video, uh, video we're just gonna be working on the hood. I'm going to do a waterless wash, just get all the loose contamination off of the paint. Then I'm gonna tape it off and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. I guess I'll, we'll, we'll do a timer. We'll, I'll clay a section for 20 seconds. Actually, I don't know. This thing's so bad, it might need to take a little bit longer, but I'll clay for, we'll say, we'll give it 30 seconds. I'll do uh, four sections. We'll do traditional clay, clay block, clay mitt, and clay pad. Uh, four different sections, 30 seconds each, and see which one gets the faster results um, of you know, getting more contamination out. So let's head over there and get this going. All right, guys, so for my purposes, I'm just gonna be using a little bit of O&R, actually. Um, <clears throat> not in the traditional sense, I'm actually just gonna spray it on, let it dwell a little bit, and then wipe it off. Again, this car is still hammered. I'm not really concerned with preserving <laughs> how the paint is right now. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and spray this on. Now this is not the traditional way that you would use O&R, but I have found that it works quite well, uh, especially for a situation like this. So that's what we're doing for now. I'm gonna spray down one of the towels as well. Okay, and then we'll wipe it out. Man, I, can you guys hear that? It is so contaminated, it's crazy. So, again, all this industrial fallout will come out. It's just a matter of using the right product to do the job. Now, that right product is clay to get this out. So, geez, I'm not even pushing hard, guys. This hood's just very, very thin in that section. We're gonna have to get used to that, apparently, because we're gonna be pushing uh, not heavily, but um, you know, you, you apply a little bit of pressure when you're using clay. So we'll uh, have to deal with that noise because I'm barely putting any pressure on right now and it's doing it. So my goodness, I'm just going to dry it off so we can get the tape down and then we can get started. And we're going to go ahead and try and do four equal sections. So I'm just going to start in the middle, lay that down. Okay, and then we'll do a section and a section. We'll have our four sections ready to roll for this test. All right, guys, there we are. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Now, for lubrication, I'm going to be using Chemical Guys Clay Luber. Um, now, just so you know, in order to get the job done faster, uh, typically when I'm doing a, a detail, especially mobily, um, I'll foam cannon the whole vehicle, rinse it, get, it all, get all the debris off, and then I'll foam it using a product like Meguiar's Gold Class that has a lot of lubrication in it. Um, and then as the car is foamed, grab my clay and start claying. It's the fastest way with this. You gotta go section by section. You're spraying, your, your wrist is getting tired from pumping the little trigger so much. Foam cannon, clay, boom, done. Rinse it off and you're good to go. But for this instance, guys, since we're doing small tests here, we're gonna start off uh, this first section. Um, see, it's already sticking to the panel there, but let me go ahead and zoom you guys in for this first one. Um, actually, we're gonna leave you there because I'm gonna be, I forgot I'm gonna be doing it kind of further back. And I'm gonna set up a timer for 30 seconds. So let me grab my phone. 
Alrighty guys, so here we go. I've got my, my uh, phone here. I'm gonna go to stopwatch. I'm gonna get this all prepped first before I start playing. So, just as a little example to you guys, here's my phone. Sticks right on there because it's essentially like grip tape on a skateboard right now. But, so we're gonna take the lube, we're gonna coat the whole area that we're gonna be working on, saturating it so that it's nice and slick. Okay, then we're gonna take the clay, the clay itself and coat that as well. Get this nice and slick, and then we're good to go. So I'll probably be applying more lube, uh, clay luber as I'm going. But the reason I do like that clay luber stuff, guys, is it smells really good. But anyways, we're gonna get the clock started, and let me switch up my stance so we can do this, and here we go. 29, 30. All right, there it is. So let's recap that real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and spray off some of this, the, the clay. Okay, and as you guys can see, you see all that contamination in there? That's all embedded into that clay now. It pulled it from the panel and now it's in the clay. So we're gonna go ahead and dry this section off. And if you guys noted, um, I actually, while I was playing, I pretty much go the same direction the entire time. That just lets me see that it, if the clay is marring the paint at all, it allows me to see where I put the, 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 the marring in because it's all in the same direction that I can go back and polish that out and make it perfect. So guys, that did a pretty good job. I'm gonna go ahead and pull you in closer so we can see that. So there we are, guys. You can see already that the paint is much, much wider because all that contamination is out. However, let's see if I can get this looking better for you. I apologize, guys, this is really hard to film. There we go, you can see all these specks, right? That's on the side that I didn't do yet, and then on the side I did do, it's looking much, much, much better. These are deep scratches, those aren't coming out from a clay, um, but I did miss, you know, just from working this panel, some sections up here, Sections there, again, I'm working with a very, very small surface area and in 30 seconds. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next section using the clay block. Section number two, same process. I'm gonna lube, uh, spray down this whole section with the clay luber. Alrighty, I'm gonna load up my clay, the synthetic clay block. Put that up there for now. I'm gonna get my stopwatch ready and we're gonna run again for 30 seconds. Reset and here we go. Twenty-eight, thirty. Wow. That did a terrible job. Let's go ahead and dry that down. And guys, let me tell you how bad of a job that did. I don't know if you can see, let me zoom you in. Like, just, I'll take you in. Um, actually, let's leave that for the end. That way I don't have to take you on off the tripod. We're gonna move on to the clay mitt now and check that one out. As I said before, exact same process. Now with this one, there was a little tag. I ripped that tag off, so I'm not uh, running the risk of that tag causing any da uh, damage to the paint. Again, in this situation, this is so destroyed anyway, it's not a big deal, but in most circumstances, your car doesn't look that bad and you need to clay it. So take off anything that could potentially harm your paint. All right, here we go. Thirty seconds. Let's go ahead and dry that one down and we'll move on to the last type of clay, which is my clay pad. I'll move this over here, reset that. Last section, way over here, we're using the clay pad. Again, same exact process, load it up, and then we'll start doing it for 30 seconds and seeing what the results are compared to the others. All righty guys, here we go. 28. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this down. Good to go. And let's inspect. 
Okay guys, so now we're gonna take a closer look at the job that each of those sections uh, achieved, those different types of clay. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna flip you around. And here we go, I'm gonna have to adjust the lighting so that you guys can see better. All right, number one. Did a pretty good job. You can see the paint is looking shinier because all that contamination is out. I did miss spots up here, right there. Uh, let's see, where else? Right here on the edge. Now again, right on the edge here again. Again, guys, I was only gave myself 30 seconds. So keep that in mind. One thing I wanna show you guys, I showed you before how the phone just stuck there because the, all the contamination makes the paint feel like, um, um, uh, like grip tape. So now, put the phone there, slides right off. It is not protected and it's not polished. The, the hydrophobic property, properties and the slickness of this will get better with the polish and protection. However, just to show you the difference, guys, here is the clay block, 30 seconds. It did essentially nothing. Like very, very, very disappointing. Gonna put the phone on there. I mean, just, it's total grip tape. Yeah, so, not so good. Chemical guys, clay block, bit of a failure. Now, the clay mitt, better, much, much better than the clay bar. However, there's still quite a lot of contamination in here, guys, a ton, actually. So uh, definitely better than the clay block. That is just ridiculous how that came out. But I'm still, this, you know, that's still not good. So slickness is better. There's definitely less contamination over here than on the other side, but still not good. Last one is our clay pad, and it did a pretty good job. So I'm trying to see the only things that I missed here are again right in the corner and then a little bit right here, similar to the, to the clay side. So there you go, I put my phone on it. All right, and it slips right off. Once it, yeah. Okay. Nope, nope, yep, yep, okay. All right guys, so pretty shocking results actually. Um, I wasn't expecting the clay bar to do better than the other ones. But with that said, in, I started off this video saying how to clay the vehicle faster. My recommendation is to use a synthetic clay because if you drop it, you can rinse it and you're getting a bigger surface area so you can work faster. In this situation, the clay actually probably worked second best. I think the clay pad worked the best. But in this situation, the clay worked super well because it, did a, it was more efficient at pulling that stuff out. Under normal circumstances, guys, if you have a car that's not completely hammered like this one is, if it's just more of a, uh, you know, six months to a year, you're claying it, but you're, you're doing your clay treatment, um, the clay pads, all that kind of stuff uh, is the way to go. You don't have to scrub into it like this because this is so contaminated. Um, you just use a regular clay. Lube it up uh, using your foam cannon. Go over a clay really quickly. You'll feel it's perfectly smooth. Polish it out, protect your paint, and you're good to go. So that's it, guys. Those are your four different types of clay. Actually, five with a clay towel, but again, I, don't, I, I never use that. Uh, so number one choice for me is always that Max Shine clay pad. Um, but traditional clay is always a good choice as well. Just make sure you do not drop it. Uh, and also, the small surface area is kind of a pain. So again, guys, clay pad, number one choice for me. And, uh, but that's it guys, I hope that helps. Um, I, I, I know it saved me a ton of time, especially doing multiple cars in a day. That clay pad gets me through claying so much faster. So please go ahead and like this video guys. I really help, it really helps the uh, YouTube algorithm so more people can see it. Um, please make sure you're subscribed and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you on the next one.